Here's a question for you. What if you had a crystal ball and you can use it to see into the future? Would you use it to predict what kinds of new technologies will shape the world tomorrow? Would you look at which stocks are doing the best and invest in those companies today? What if those companies each had a crystal ball of their own? How much of an advantage would that give them over their competitors? Believe it or not, this is a question we can answer because of Palantir, a company named after the indestructible crystal balls from Lord of the Rings that are known for their ability to see into the future. Palantir, the company, focuses on making predictions based on lots and lots of data, and they've been making big investments in 12 other companies. So let's gaze into Palantir's investments and see what we can learn about their vision of the future. Sarcos Robotics is a maker of highly dexterous mobile industrial robotic systems, focused on enabling the workforce of the future with solutions that enhance productivity, reduce occupational injuries, and equalize employment opportunities for the jobs around the world that don't lend themselves well to automation. They're building robots as a service. The Guardian XO is an exoskeleton that users wear to enhance full body power, meaning adding strength and endurance to the arms and legs to give one worker the power of roughly three workers. Importantly, the exoskeleton only takes one day of training, which is much less than it takes to learn to operate a forklift, so there's a real total addressable market here. Sarcos also makes the Guardian XT, a robotic avatar that integrates with many mobile or telescoping bases that a worker on the ground controls through a virtual reality headset. Between the XO exoskeleton and the XT avatar, Sarcos Robotics has a wide variety of industrial and military use cases in a world where labor shortages are increasing and companies are forced to do much more with much less. I'm not sure exactly how Sarcos will end up using Palantir's services and platforms, but I bet Sarcos Robotics can benefit from Palantir's many connections in the Department of Defense. Sarcos currently trades under the ticker symbol ROT for Rotor Acquisition Corp and will trade under the ticker symbol STRC if their merger completes later this year. Fast Radius is a cloud manufacturing and digital supply chain company that focuses on building infrastructure to design, make, and move things in the digital age. They want to make ordering custom parts as easy as it is to order groceries. To do that, they have a software platform called the Cloud Manufacturing Platform that lets people design and get feedback on parts before getting them made. The software supports digital simulations of materials and structures as well as collaborative design. Once the design is finalized, you can store it inside a virtual warehouse, where it's waiting to be ordered before it's made, meaning companies and individuals no longer need to store physical inventories. The part is made when it's demanded, not before. The parts are 3D printed at a fast radius micro factory, which are highly scalable units that act as factories in a box. Everything from fast radius's proprietary data architecture to their micro factories are designed to be copy and pasted and enable a distributed, digitally connected network. In my opinion, the mark of a truly disruptive innovator is a company that's tackling a problem that many different industries and market sectors can point to. Fast Radius is solving the current problems associated with centralized mega factories, slow moving and easily disrupted supply chains, the massive amount of space it takes to store physical goods, and the poorly scaling back end operations that many big manufacturers have today. I can't even begin to imagine the mountains of data that Fast Radius is generating at every step of their value chain, from part design to production to fulfillment, making it another shoe in for Palantir's foundry to generate these deep insights that result in optimizing every step. For example, automatically recommending design changes to save costs or increase performance, automatically routing that design to the correct micro factory for the quickest fulfillment, and controlling the overall material supply to handle all of their aggregate demand. I'm sure I'm missing about a thousand different things that Palantir can help Fast Radius with, while Fast Radius helps the world revolutionize manufacturing. Fast Radius will be merging with ECP Environmental Growth Opportunities Corp, ticker symbol ENNV, later this year. Lilium is a company focused on electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, or EVITALs. For people, they want to deliver the feel of a business jet with the convenience of a car. For cargo, they want to deliver, uh, cargo. According to their investor presentation, William has a few distinct advantages in this space. Their battery systems are very energy dense and built to scale, meaning they can just stack up the same one battery module until they meet their power and redundancy and safety requirements. Those modules are also fully self-contained, so if there's a malfunction in any one of them, they can continue to fly safely as the damage will be contained to that one module. Their ducted electric vectored thrust system is low noise, low vibration, and modular as well, 
Well, noise is important because noise pollution could become a serious issue as the air taxi market takes off. Just like the battery cells, they can stack their thrust system modules on the wings until they have the propulsion they require. Altogether, Williams aircraft have about 30 times fewer parts than commercial airliners, resulting in a very efficient manufacturing process. William will be building 28 vertiports in Florida as well as Germany, and bringing about 315 jets into service by 2025. You can bet your tail fin that I'm going to take a ride when they finish their vertiport in Tampa. My guess is they'll be using the Palantir platform for flight planning, charging and aircraft data management, and other complex operations that require understanding what's going on with their entire fleet. William currently trades under the ticker symbol QELL, which is the Kell Acquisition Corp, and will be trading under the ticker symbol LILM if that merger completes. Weijo, which is a combination of the words We Journey, onboards and standardizes over 14 billion unique data points every day from connected vehicles through its cloud platform called Weijo Adept, which stands for Automotive Data Exchange Platform and Technology. The types of data it takes in is the vehicle's location, speed, environmental data, camera data, and much more. By partnering with automotive manufacturers, Weijo will be able to take in automotive data directly from any vehicles manufactured by a partner brand. That data is then stored in the Weijo data lake and used to inform traffic management, advertising, remote diagnostics, roadside assistance, and even payments. From there, Weijo is building a marketplace for other companies to build apps and services on top of that huge data set. Think about apps like traffic monitoring, civil engineering and parking optimization, EV charging loads, mapping and navigation, and much more. This is a no-brainer business for Palantir's platforms, which focus on exactly this type of data collection, refinement, and insight generation. The SPAC Weijo is merging with is Virtuoso Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol VOSO, and will trade under the ticker WEJO if that merger completes. Tritium is a DCFC, or Direct Current Fast Charging company, focused on infrastructure for electric vehicles. The way I see it, electric vehicles have two perceived problems today, and they're both related to charging. First, people aren't confident that there are enough chargers to get them across long distances without taking major detours. And second, the actual charging experience itself is much longer and much less convenient than filling up a gas tank. Tritium's 350 kilowatt DC fast charger can add about 20 miles of range per minute, and their charging solution is positioned to supply all different types of demand, from consumers to fleet managers to retail campuses to utilities. That's because their chargers have a very low footprint, allowing bigger electric vehicles to fit inside the same spot as the charger. Those chargers are also modular, meaning they're upgradable over time and very easy to service. Tritium's barriers to entry are their integrated software, firmware, and the data they collect per use in each location, as well as on things like climate and electrical grid conditions. That data is then fed into a software management platform called Tritium Pulse. Tritium seems to be a direct competitor to Tesla's supercharger network, and this aggressive focus on data seems pretty unusual for a physical infrastructure company, which is probably why Palantir invested in Tritium. Palantir's foundry will help by managing and visualizing all these different types of data to provide insights into demand for charging at various locations and different ways to use their platform. Tritium is merging with Decarbonization Plus Acquisition Corporation 2, ticker symbol DCRN, and will trade under the ticker symbol DCFC later this year. Boxed is an end-to-end -end commerce platform that focuses on selling high repeat essentials in bulk to businesses and individual customers. Boxed really focuses on the backroaders and small towners, people who live in rural areas with houses, buy in bulk, and have a small business mentality, and tend to be anti-Amazon. They have a lot of room to grow with these kinds of households since they've penetrated less than one half of 1% of their total addressable market. Boxed is creating one of the few omni-channel platforms that integrates everything from the actual storefront experience to business operations and supply chain to online marketplaces and advertising, and of course, in-house robotics and fulfillment meaning you can stand up an entire business only on Boxed. That's where their relationship with Palantir will probably come in. They'll probably use the Foundry platform to get all of this data together and use machine learning to estimate store supplies and customer demands to predict shopping patterns and push highly effective notifications to people. I'm sure they'll also use it on the logistics side to optimize the use of their robots and fulfillment centers. Box is merging with Seven Oaks Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol SVOK, toward the end of the year, and I haven't found out what ticker symbol they'll choose if that merger completes. 
Credivo is a buy now, pay later company based in Indonesia. Square just bought Afterpay for almost $30 billion here in America, making it clear that buy now, pay later solutions are definitely a key part of the future of digital finance. It turns out that many emerging markets, including Indonesia's, have a completely broken financial system that makes people skip banks altogether and go directly towards innovative alternatives. Credivo drives around 3% of all of Indonesia's e-commerce. It's the single largest credit payment channel after physical credit cards and has almost a 50% market share for buy now, pay later systems. They focus on deep data insights to drive on-time monthly repayments and connect customers to merchants and payment options with low friction. Their whole flywheel relies on data to drive the customer experience as well as manage the risk and funding lines on the supply side. Credivo reminds me a lot of Square, if Square started with a buy now pay later system instead of as a digital wallet and point of sale platform for vendors. Credivo is expanding into neo banking, including auto loans, housing loans, and other wealth management products. My guess is Credivo will use Palantir's platform to analyze mountains of consumer, vendor, and financial data to increase customer lifetime value by reducing application approval times, cross-selling and upselling products and services from other vendors, and increasing average order values through their buy now, pay later offerings. I also think they'll use Palantir to drive down customer acquisition costs and liabilities by automatically determining the best dynamic interest rates, credit scores and credit limits, and speeding up the detection and resolution of fraud cases. If you didn't know, Palantir started from fraud detection techniques and technologies built at PayPal, so Palantir has deep roots in the financial services space. It's cool to see Palantir come full circle as an investor in the same type of company that its technology started from. Credivo is merging with Victory Park Capital, ticker symbol VPCB, and I haven't found out what ticker symbol they'll choose if that merger completes. Adtherent is a data science and machine learning platform for performance digital advertising. Instead of relying on basic audience segmentation and browser cookies, which are responsible for all those annoying privacy pop-ups you get on every single website today, Adtherent uses hundreds of non-sensitive data signals that are not tied to your identity. Instead, they use information such as what city a consumer is in and the temperature at the time of day they logged on, what type of phone and browser they're using, and so on. This means that Adtherent is focused on being a responsible data company, which aligns very well with Palantir's core values. Besides that, Adtherent uses machine learning models on these mountains of data to optimize which ads to put in front of everyone in real time without ever using identity information. As a result, they're able to outperform other demand-side platforms or DSPs that rely on cookies and audience segments by hundreds of percentage points. Adtherent's focus on using big data and maintaining user privacy makes it a no-brainer for Palantir's platform, who can help them organize and optimize how they decide to put which ads in front of people to keep increasing their overall performance per dollar above their competition, who are still relying on things like cookies. Adtherent is merging with Monroe Capital Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol MACQ, by the end of this year, and I haven't found out what ticker symbol they'll choose if that merger completes. Pair Therapeutics is a prescription software company. Yep, you heard that correctly. Digital prescription therapeutics are a result of the convergence of technology and medicine, and these apps need FDA approval if they're being used as medical tools. The interesting thing about this convergence is the offerings can have software-like margins at therapeutic-like prices, meaning they're very expensive, recurring, high-margin revenues. Pair Therapeutics is building a platform for app-based offerings like cognitive behavioral therapy, fluency training, and craving and trigger assessments with a clinician-connected telemedicine platform. And these offerings show real results. Patients are more than twice as likely to abstain from substances with the help of prescription digital therapeutics and, in most cases, can entirely replace an in-person therapist altogether. And not just in-person therapists. There's a 62% reduction in overall hospital utilization and a 20% reduction in emergency visits because of things like notifications and check-ins and progress reports that can form positive feedback loops at faster rates than traditional in-person care can provide. Oh, and there's no need to turn to expensive pharmaceutical drugs to manage their symptoms. Pair currently has 14 product candidates in various developmental stages, ranging from psychiatric applications like substance abuse and addiction therapies to neurological applications like chronic pain, migraine management, and epilepsy. 
Pair Therapeutics will probably use Palantir's Foundry to analyze the mountains of data they generate from interactions within each app on their platform, to optimize existing therapies as well as discover new use cases. Pair is merging with Thimblepoint Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol THMA, and will trade under the ticker symbol PEAR if that merger completes later this year. Babylon Health is a digitally native healthcare platform that leverages artificial intelligence to improve healthcare and lower costs. So, Babylon is a telemedicine company kind of like Teladoc and Livongo, where lots and lots of client data is used to proactively monitor health, prevent disease, and route patients to the correct professionals. I think in both cases, Teladoc and Babylon Health, one of the things people don't appreciate is that a lot of these insights are made by interpreting lots of medical data like blood panels and other test results, so these are application-specific data pipelines and processing techniques. Babylon Health is taking their data pipelines and processing techniques to the next level, with state-of-the-art natural language processing technology to process clinical information from health records and make predictions on future health risks. Palantir is probably helping them with the entire foundation of their business, gathering, cleaning, and processing these large amounts of medical and insurance and user interaction data to virtually connect patients to the proper solutions from across the entire spectrum of healthcare options. Babylon Health plans to merge with Alkuri Global Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol KURI, and will trade under the ticker symbol BBLN if that merger completes. Royvent is a portfolio of early-stage candidate pharmaceutical therapies that focuses on acquiring trapped projects from larger companies and developing them for narrower applications. Royvent is in the process of building a machine learning platform for their internal drug development and selection process. Royvent is heavily involved in computational drug development, computational physics, and machine learning for things like protein folding and other proteomics applications. This is probably where Royvent will leverage their partnership with Palantir to speed up this process of using data to discover, develop, and select drugs. They have more than 40 molecules currently in development and have conducted eight positive phase three clinical trials in a row, two of which have approvals by the FDA. Royvent is merging with Montez Archimedes Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol MAAC, and then will be trading under the ticker symbol ROIV if that merger completes. ARK Invest's 2021 Big Ideas report also mentions the shift from autologous cell therapies to allogeneic cell therapies. Autologous means that the cells are harvested from the affected patient, so one treatment for one patient. Allogeneic cell therapies involve off-the-shelf or donated cells, meaning one donor can supply treatments to many different people. One risk of allogeneic therapies is that the patient's immune system can reject the donated cells, but the reward is being able to scale these therapies and apply them to earlier stages of disease, like cancer. Cellularity makes novel pharmaceutical therapies from these allogeneic cells. They have a broad pipeline of candidate products across a wide variety of therapies. Look, I won't pretend to understand what cellularity actually does, but more and more pharmaceutical companies are getting into protein folding and modeling, drug simulations and discovery, and other specialized big data applications. Palantir could be helping with all of the data aggregation and processing in their drug and therapy pipelines, allowing them to try more things faster and learn from their data in new ways. Cellularity is already listed on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol CELU. It's also currently trading well below its $10 SPAC price, so it could be worth following up on with more research in the short term. Whew, we made it. Those are the 12 special purpose acquisition companies or SPACs that Palantir has invested in. Here's a quick note about SPACs, since I get this question a lot. SPACs basically exist to raise money and buy another company. They don't do anything on their own. The SPAC is publicly traded, so when they choose a private company to acquire, their ticker gets associated with that company. Then, when the two companies formally merge, the private company that got acquired is now publicly traded, and usually changes its ticker symbol to reflect its brand. If you hold shares of the SPAC through the merger, your shares automatically convert from the SPAC's ticker symbol to the one of the company it merged with. It can take a couple days, but you don't have to do anything. It automatically happens. Besides all of these companies being SPACs, here are the things I think they have in common. All of these companies are built to scale very quickly. The companies that are making physical products, like Sarcos Robotics and Fast Radius and Lilium, all have very modular designs with very low part counts compared to their competitors, meaning a small tweak in the design can have a big impact on their overall performance. 
their products can also be used in a wide variety of industries. Every company on this list is built from the ground up with data in mind, even if they're operating in markets where data is usually secondary to the actual product. For example, in automotive, in the case of Weijo, and in infrastructure, in the case of Tritium. All of these companies are also providing Palantir with unique use cases and data sets, which they can learn from to provide new capabilities and models and support for future companies down the road. Think about how much easier it'll be for Palantir to add value to the next robotics company, the next e-commerce company, and the next genomics company. My guess is they're going to keep picking new companies that offer them the most insight into new use cases, like augmented and virtual reality, the metaverse, or maybe even blockchain technology companies. Leave me a comment or tweet me at ticker symbol U with your favorite company that Palantir has invested in and why. Is there one that excites you the most or one you think that will be far more profitable than the rest? I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Either way, I hope this episode and the crazy amount of resources I've provided in the description below have helped you understand the companies that Palantir is investing in, the challenges they're addressing, and how Palantir's Foundry platform is helping these companies scale fast while providing Palantir with valuable insights into how to build more capabilities for future companies. If it did, consider investing in the like button and subscribing to the channel with all notifications turned on. That's a great way to invest in the channel that invests in you. Until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.